ちょっと来い怪しい奴がいるぞ What is the most resilient Paris? Inception! What a fucking great movie. I watched it at least seven times. I want to say it was 12. I'm almost sure it was 16, but I don't want to exaggerate, so I'm just gonna say I saw it 10 times. 10 times. This is not a recent movie, it probably has five years or so, so most of you have probably already seen it. But just in case, I'll do just a little, just in case I'll sum it up for you before my humble analysis of the movie. If you didn't watch it, I would recommend you to leave and go watch it. But at the same time, I do need the views, so I'm going to recommend you to stay. At least for 45 seconds or something until the views count go up. Thanks. The main characters are Cobb, Adrian, Arthur, Eames, Mao, Fisher, Mr. Saito and the potion guy, who's very funny. Mr. Saito wants to hire Cobb to get an idea into Fisher's mind to destroy his parents' company. Cobb doesn't want to. Saito offers him to go back and see his children that he couldn't see because he was escaping because he was accused of having killed his wife. But Mr. Saito says he can solve everything with just a phone call. Cobb now wants to. Cobb and his team prepare an inception and get inside the dream, but there's one problem. Cobb's dead wife creeps in and wants to sabotage the operation. As we go deeper into Fisher, we're also going deeper into you. Remember that. <laughs> also, a lot of people want to kill them in their dreams. Dreams, 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 more dreams, and then everything turns out okay. Cobb says goodbye to Mo, saves Saito from rotting to death, and goes back to his children. The movie itself leaves you with two questions. Is this the real life or is this just fantasy? And the other question is, which one do you prefer? Now, disclaimers. First, I know nothing, nothing about movies. I'm just here, as I said, to give my humble analysis of the movie. Or analysis, I don't know how to say that word. And the second disclaimer is that a lot of people talk about how Inception is a copycat of another Japanese movie. I think it's a Japanese movie, I'm not sure. I'm sorry about that. But that is called Paprika or something like that. I personally didn't watch it yet, but I'm going to treat Inception as a whole new entity as another person on planet earth i'm not gonna talk about other movies today we're gonna appreciate inception by what it is i personally think that in the world of filmmaking it's very common to see directors borrowing stuff from other directors tarantino borrows stuff from other directors all the time and nobody complains about it so i can't see why everyone is so fucking mad about inception the best fucking movie ever Oh, let me see this. Gotcha. <laughs> In my opinion, It's a dream. I think it's a dream because during the whole movie there are analogies in the dreams about the things that he has done to his wife. There are lines in the movie that come literally out of nowhere. Out of fucking nowhere. Questioning Cobb and questioning him for what he has done without the viewer yet knowing what had happened. So that's why it's so... I think that's why it's also like so confusing the whole movie because you're constantly not knowing what the fuck happened and I don't think anyone could ever expect from anyone that they understand the movie and that they have a conclusion on the first watch it's definitely a movie to watch more than twice at least uh, if not 16 times because it's like so saturated with information I, I this is the 16th time I watched it and still there are things that that I didn't notice before because you're constantly for every new thing that happens you're still processing the last thing that just happened so it's a very confusing movie but for example there's a scene with the potion guy that they meet him and they go downstairs to like some sort of 
it's not a cave, I don't know how you call it, a sotano. And the potion guy grabs like some keys and a water scalp that he might not want to see it, etc. Remember that, I'm gonna mention it later. And so they go down and there are people like sleeping and Cobb asks what the fuck is going on. And the potion, and, and, and then one fucking guy pops out of nowhere and says, They come here every day to sleep. No, they come to be woken up. The dream has become the reality. Who are you to say otherwise? <laughs> Where the fuck did this guy came from? What the fuck? Nobody knows him, not even Cobb. How the fuck is he gonna know what happened with his wife if he doesn't know him? Ah, because it's a dream. The explanation for this is that the old guy is like a projection inside of his dream and it's like a projection of his own subconscious mind. Just like Uncle Pete. Uncle Pete? Is that, that was the name? Uncle Pete? Uncle Peter? I don't know. Prime source of information. Ouch. But just like in, in Fisher's dream, his subconscious creates like a projection of his own view of Uncle Peter and they see how, like, oh this is like so complex to explain but basically Fisher creates one projection in his dream that is his point of view of Uncle Pete and the way he perceives now Uncle Pete. So what I think is that Cobb did the same thing with this old guy and this old guy is just his subconscious telling him that he's not living in reality basically. Also, the key thing that I told you about, the potion guy grabs a key and that reminds me all the time that that Cobb tells Adrian that when they want to extract information, they just create something secure like a, like a bank vault or a jail. The mind automatically fills it with information it's trying to protect. And then he goes to the restroom and, and, and he does like that thing with the totem and, and spins it. And you can't really see if he's dreaming or not because Saito comes in and, and he's like, is everything all right? And then, and then Cobb is like, yeah, everything's all right and gets the fuck out of there, you know what I'm saying? So you don't really know if he's streaming or not, which proves my point, motherfuckers. Also, there's a line in the movie that says, Maul is bursting through your subconscious. And the truth that as we go deeper into Fisher, we're also going deeper into you. And that's also, you know, how he starts resolving his problems. There's like a um, minotaur, I think that's the way you call it thing going on, like a labyrinth minotaur thing going on, that's how I interpret it. The more he goes deeper, the more he solves the problems. The snow level, he shoots Maul for the first time because he accepts in that part that she's not real. That's because he's facing a decision. Maul's about to sabotage the mission to decide between her and the possibility of seeing his children again. So he finally kills her and, and I think that's also like a breaking point for him, you know, also because that's when he truly, truly realizes and digests that she's not real and, and that she might be not real anymore. And then there's another problem and they have to go deeper and they go into the limbo. Limbo? Limbo? I don't know how the fuck you say it. And there's a crucial, crucial line that Maul says that is. I know it's real, Maul. No creeping doubts. Not feeling persecuted, dumb. Chased around the globe by anonymous corporations and police forces, the way the projections persecute the dreamer. The company that's chasing him is Cobol Engineering. Cobol, Cobb, 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 all. Cobb, Cobb, Cobble, Cobble. Get it? It's himself. It's himself all along. It's himself all along. And it makes him wonder what's better, real life or fantasy. In the last dream, he shoots her. And kills her, basically. And in the limbo, he finally lets her go. can't imagine you with all your complexity, all your perfection, all your imperfection. You're just a shade of my real wife. You are the best that I can do, but I'm sorry, you're just not good enough. What a fucking great movie! And that's when he solves the problem, in my opinion. And then he stays at limbo to save his friend, his friend, meaning client. <clears throat> I tend to overanalyze everything because you know that's just me. But in the last scene, I think it's very curious the dialogue they have between Saito and Cobb. It's almost romantic, which I mean it could be, but I don't think the director would pop out of nowhere that oh all of a sudden Mr. Saito and, and Cobb are soulmates. You know, like it doesn't really make a lot of fucking sense. To remind you of something. 
Something you once knew. This world is not real. Convince me to honor our arrangement. To take a leap of faith, yes. Come back so we can be young men together again. Come back with me. So I, I think it's very curious because it seems like Cobb is actually talking to Mal. And when he says that that he's an old man filled with regret waiting to die alone, come back and be young together again, that's just too romantic for a fucking client you just fucking met a week ago. It's too weird that all of a sudden they talk to each other like that. I have nothing against it, alright? I'm not saying no homo. So in my opinion, he's actually talking to Mal because it's a dream. Save inside or it's like and somehow he remedies what he had fucking done with his wife. Guys, I think the moral of the story here is don't fuck up your wife. <laughs> end of the movie. The end. Welcome to Cinema Jokes! Da -da 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 -da. And then one of them says, someone from a half-remembered dream. And it makes me remember the scene where Maul uh, explains Adrienne that she would never understand what it's like to be a lover, a half of a whole. Another small, very small reference to what uh, Maul had said before. And I think it's very interesting because it proves my point. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna read you something I wrote um, because you know why would I pretend that I'm not reading? To me, Sado is like a projection of Mal in the subconscious of Cobb, just like the projection of Uncle Peter was in Fisher's dream. It was what Fisher thought of Uncle Peter. I already talked about it before. I don't know why I'm talking about it now. It makes a lot of sense, bitch. And then the most obvious explanation is that when he comes back, he sees his children and his children are dressed exactly the same as when he left. I could understand it that they are just as young as when he left, like they have the same age because time is very relative in the movie and it's very confusing so it could be that he just left for a month or something and they are, still look the same. But the same clothes after all that time Philippa and James have the same exact clothes? Come on, motherfucker. It's a fucking dream. And they're playing the exact same game that they were playing before. At the exact same spot. It's like too much of a coincidence. I feel like I don't have to explain myself anymore. It's very clear. I'm right. I will always be. I know that them being exactly the same as when they left also like gives more power to the scene and to the like re-encounter of them but I really don't think they did it just because of that I really think if Christopher Nolan just wanted to say here's a strong meeting between a parent and two kids he could have done something different I think he kept it that exact same way because it was a dream I think the moral of the story is that it doesn't really matter in the end if it's real or not. At the end, the totem starts to do like blah blah blah, you know? I don't know what's the word for it. But it, but you can't really see if it falls or if it keeps spinning. And he's not even watching because at this point, Cobb doesn't give a fuck anymore if it's real or not. Because he's with his children and that's all he wanted to do. He's basically doing the same thing all over again. <laughs> he already saw the thing with his wife, he came back, he saw his children. And he's not questioning if it's real or not because it's what he wanted. Any conclusion that you or I could pull out of the hat, as we say in Argentina, is irrelevant. Because the meaning of the movie is that humans don't care about reality more than they do about happiness. And if that means living in a dream, so fucking be it. I think the movie is a story that, you know, really sticks with us, or at least with me. Um, because, you know, I, I feel like deep inside we can all kind of relate to him in some way. We would all like to live in a dream and live with people that we have lost, etc, etc. Very sad, etc. And more, etc. And more uh, uh, bad English speaking. Oh my god, I thought I would never finish this fucking video. <laughs> but tell me, what do you think? Do you think it's real? Do you think it's a dream? Let me know in the comments below. And if you think it's real... I'm gonna prove you wrong. If you wanna hear me say stupid shit all day long, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Miss Hella Divine. You can also follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I'm really fun in there. This video will be up on YouTube, so if you wanna watch it in there, go ahead now. If you have Daryl, add me in there as well. I'm at Dylan Mango. Uh, I think I'll be posting my best type of content in there. And also some quick reviews of movies and stuff like that, you know. Thank you.
infinitely to my two best friends, Camila Micolis, for filming the intro, Galaxia West for throwing the water to my face. Thank you for that. Very good special effects. I fucking love them and they're super awesome, so you should check them out. And if you have any suggestions for movies you think I should review or give my humble analysis to, let me know in the comments or DM me and let me know. I'll take into consideration your suggestions. New favorite topic, movies, yay. Thank you so much for watching. And as usual, we'll catch up later.